Yay! It's that time of year again! Ramadan is coming up really soon and if you are already thinking about your decorations then I have got some really amazing ideas for you this year. I've worked quite hard to make them like as simple as possible but with like maximum impact because I totally get that you don't want to be spending hours putting together your Ramadan decorations especially those countdown calendars with 29 or 30 days you know there's a lot of pieces to make so I've tried to really simplify things this year it's mostly about kind of assembling things together so I'll be sharing three ideas with you one is a moon phase style um, craft but using flowers the second is some bunting and then the third is a Ramadan countdown calendar now you will find it a bit quicker to do these projects if you have a Cricut cutting machine or well any cutting machine really but if you don't then you can still totally do these projects you just will have to do a bit of hand cutting my advice is for wherever um, there is like a mosque shaped element in the project. I would actually maybe just buy a mosque shaped cookie cutter and use that to trace around and then cut. And then also of course it means you can make mosque shaped biscuits for Eid. Win! So if you are a seasoned Cricut user, here is like the very quick summary of how to make these projects. Um, if you need a bit more guidance then hang around and I will go through sort of more step by step exactly what you need to do to recreate these projects. But if you just click the links below in the description of this video you will go to the projects that I have designed within Cricut Design Space. So you will have one for the Ramadan countdown calendar. It's using the this mosque image but I've kind of adapted it for the calendar. So you'll see that each one has been sliced and I've arranged them so that you can fit 15 of these onto a 12 by 12 inch piece of cardstock. So hopefully, you know, you just need to cut um, two of these in two colors that you like. I've chosen white and kind of like um, a pink marbled sort of look. And then you will find the second project, which is, it is just the mosque image, which we're cutting for the bunting, but I've added a couple of holes to make it um, easier for you to thread it onto your string when you're doing the bunting. So yeah, just go ahead and cut them out and then literally just assemble it together. I've used some wooden beads on the bunting to really give it that kind of rustic aesthetic that I'm going for this year. Very simple but clean and also just really homely and warm. I love it. For the countdown calendar, I've just purchased um, five by five inch craft envelopes and then I've placed the half um, mosque shapes on each end of the envelope um, and I've done it so that, you know, when you string them up, you've got the two halves are next to each other in the same color. And then I've just finished them with some wooden numbers. I use foam dots for this and the idea is that, you know, you're just going to put them on each envelope to signify which day of Ramadan it is. And I'm hoping that at the end of Ramadan, you can just um, repurpose your countdown calendar by gently removing the number. Because, um, you know, even if it tears a little bit, who's going to notice really? And use it to give your Eidi in, hey? Smart, right? <laughs> And then for the moon phase decoration, I actually purchased some deco patch, deco, deco patch? Like uh, blank, so they're just like these little boxes, circular boxes. And in fact, for this, I actually used the lids of those. I've linked them in the description for you. And then I just layered in the flowers and kind of did it so that you had like a full moon, a half moon, a crescent. You could add kind of the three quarters crescent in there as well if you, if you want to. This is a very simple project. You just need the boxes, some flowers, the glue gun, and you know, you'll be done in like less than 20 minutes I'd say. Okay so let's slow down things a little bit and go through each project one at a time and I'll really explain to you in detail how you can recreate these at home. Let's start with the moon faces project. The supplies you need are small round boxes. I've linked the ones I've bought below. I then purchased these flowers in a couple of colours from Hobbycraft. I chose these ones as they're quite flat which will work quite well for this project. You will then also need your glue gun, some paper in a matching colour to the boxes if possible, although this part as you'll see is optional. Um, and then you'll need painter's tape and scissors. So for the optional part of the project, um, what I'm doing is tracing around the box and then shifting it slightly to trace around again and then create a crescent moon shape. And so once I've cut this out, this will fit perfectly inside the box. And so then I've repeated this with a full circle to represent the full moon and then also semicircles for the half moon phases. And what I'm going to do next is use painter's tape to attach these paper cutouts to the base of the boxes that I'm using. And the reason that I'm going to all this trouble is so that I can then attach the flowers on top of this paper. And what that means is, you know, at the end of Ramadan, um, I can always just 
carefully peel out this paper layer since it's only been attached with painter's tape and that leaves the box intact for me to do a new project with. And I should also be able to reuse the flowers. You can definitely skip out this step and you know just glue your flowers directly into your box if you want to. You might still want to make these paper cutouts though so that you can trace into your box the shape of each moon phase that you'll be creating with the flowers. Now all you have to do is grab your glue gun and start sticking in the flowers. I find like this looks nicest when you layer the flowers so don't just have one layer but you know have a base layer and then add some on top and kind of change up the colors that you're using as well. So just repeat this for each phase of the moon cycle and you're done. This is a really simple project, but it looks really beautiful. Okay, let's move on to the bunting. So I did use my Cricut machine for this project. Um, I'll show you how this looks in Design Space. So if you click the link in the description below, it will take you to this project screen. You can see that I've set it up so that you can fit as many of the mosque shapes as possible onto a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. But if you know, you're using a different size of card then just um, detach this image and then you'll be able to move around the individual mosque images um, and arrange them as you need it then click make it and I've actually set material as glitter cardstock I basically always use this setting when I'm working with card even if it's not glitter cardstock because I just find it gives me the best and the cleanest cut I also set the pressure to more and then just load up your mat. Um, the brayer is a very good tool for getting a good bond between your cardstock and your mat and load it into the machine and then just start the cut. I've repeated this process for the two colors of cardstock I'm using. And then once the cut is finished, unload the mats and remember that when you are working with cardstock, the best way to remove it from your mat is to turn the mat upside down and actually peel the mat away from the cardstock. And that way you shouldn't end up bending your cardstock as you take it off the mat. So to finish this project now, all you have to do is string everything together. Put your wooden balls onto the string and then alternate your mosques. Um, so I've gone for two wooden balls and then a mosque shape. Um, and then I've actually also alternated the color of the mosque shape that I've put on. And there you go, super simple project, but another one that looks really pretty. Okay, and the third project that I'm sharing today is this countdown calendar. For the supplies, you'll need some envelopes. I've bought these craft ones. They're five by five inches from Hobbycraft. Some wooden letters. If you do buy the same set that I've gone for here, um, you will actually need to buy two of the boxes just to make sure you have enough of the numbers that we'll need to get from one to 30. You'll need some wooden pegs, which we'll use to hang the envelopes on the string and then cardstock in a couple of colors. And I have chosen the same colors that I use for the bunting just so that all of the projects work really nicely and look good together. And then of course you'll need some glue. So you could use a glue pen or um, clear tacky glue. And also you'll need some foam glue squares. So in Design Space, this project looks very similar to the bunting one. Again, you can just click the link below to open it. I've arranged the shapes to fit onto a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. And so just a reminder, if you are using one of the newer machines, a Maker 3 or Explore 3, you need to make sure you select the on mat option um, when you get through to the mats screen. Set your material choices as before, heavy cardstock or glitter cardstock, pressure to more, load up your fine point blade and start the cut. So to assemble this project, what you're gonna do is on each envelope, place a wooden number into the center and towards the bottom of each envelope. And I've actually used a foam square here just to give a bit of um, height and um, depth to the finished project. And then on either side of the um, envelopes, I've glued on one of the mosque halves. So I've done this um, in alternating colors so that you know when you hang up these envelopes, you'll have the same colors next to each other on two envelopes that are next to each other. So just repeat this for all 30 envelopes and maybe you'd want to put inside like a small reminder or a small good deed that you or your kids could do as well as of course a little chocolate or something a bit healthier like raisins. So that's it, all three projects are finished. So all you have to do now is adorn your home with your beautiful creations. I have used painter's tape again to attach everything to the walls. And this is just so that, you know, I, I don't particularly want to damage the paint on the walls. So painter's tape works quite well for that. 
So I really hope you guys liked my inspiration this year for Ramadan. Um, if you try these projects, I'd love to see. Please tag me um, on Instagram. Uh, my profile is at rabia.khans. Um, and yeah, I'd love to see how you guys are decorating for Ramadan this year. So even if you're doing your own ideas, I'd still love for you to tag me so I can see. Keep an eye out on the channel because I have at least one more idea that I want to share with you for your Ramadan decorations this year. But otherwise, just to wish you a very warm Ramadan Mubarak. And I really pray that you and your family benefit from this blessed month. See you next time. Happy crafting!